الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today we will start with سورة الأعلى سورة الأعلى uh, with regards to it being Meccan or Medinan the majority of the scholars of Tafsir uh, stated that it was a Meccan surah. As a matter of fact, some said that uh, or conveyed that it's a consensus of the scholars. However, some disputed it being a Medinan uh, surah. But the, uh, the uh, evidence for it being a Meccan surah is very strong because it's reported by Imam al-Bukhari. Uh, Al-Bara' radiallahu anhu said, uh, the first from the companions of the Prophet وسلم, who arrived to Al Medina were Mus'ab ibn Umayr and Ibn Ummi Maktoum. Uh, and then they started teaching us the Quran, and then followed them came Ammar, Bilal, and Sa'd, and later came Umar عنه, ibn Khattab, along with 20 of the companions of the Prophet. He said, and then later after that, the Prophet وسلم, arrived uh, to Al Medina, and I haven't seen uh, the Medinan people so happy uh, and joyful about anything uh, as much as they were happy for the arrival of the Prophet وسلم, to the extent that young boys and girls were going around screaming, The Prophet of Allah has arrived. He said, and by the time he has arrived, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I had learned Surah Al-A'la as well as other surahs similar to it in size. Right? So it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he even arrived to uh, Al-Madinah. The name of the surah is Surah Al-A'la, uh, according to the majority of the uh, books of Tafsir. It was revealed after Surah Al-Takweer and before Surah Al-Layl. Uh, as for the uh, reason for revelation, there is no recorded reason, a particular reason for the revelation of Surah Al-A'la. The Prophet ﷺ used to recite Surah Al-A'la and Surah Al-Ghashiyah, Al-Atak Hadith Al-Ghashiyah, in uh, the, prayer of Eid, the prayers of Eid and the prayer of Al-Jumu'ah. Uh, now let's get into the, uh, the tafsir of the Surah itself. Allah Azza wa Jal starts with سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى Exalt the name of your Lord, the Most High. Exalt, سَبِّح This is a command addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in principle and then his ummah after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a number of the companions as well as the uh, tabi'een said it is a command for him to say, Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la. Uqba uh, ibn Amr, and this is reported by Ibn Majah and classified as sound by al arnaut said, when Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمُ which is the last verse of Surah Al-Waqi'ah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, use this in your rukur, meaning say, Subhan Rabbi Al-Azim. And when Allah Azza wa Jal uh, revealed Subbihisma Rabbika al A'la, he said, use this in your sujood, meaning say Subhan Rabbi al A'la in your sujood. Uh, Ibn Ashur Rahmatullahi Ali he said, Allah Azza wa Jal started this verse, uh, this uh, chapter, this surah, uh, addressing the Prophet وسلم, to exalt the name of his Lord. He said, This is paving the way to a glad tidings of something good that's going to happen or be conveyed to him وسلم, later on uh, in the surah. Sabbih, exalt or glorify the name of uh, your Lord. Exalting the name of Allah Azza wa Jal is, or one of the implications of that is to use the names of Allah Azza wa Jal the way they ought to be used. Not to use or to address someone with some of the names of Allah that cannot be addressed, that no one can be addressed with except Allah, like Lavadul Jalala, Allah. No one can be named Allah except Allah. Ar Rahman. These two names of Allah, جل, no human can be called with. Kareem, Allah is Al Kareem, generous. So you can call someone uh, Kareem or describe him to be 
Kareem, generous, right? But Allah and Ar-Rahman, these two particular names, no one can be called these two names except Allah Azza wa Jalla. So this is one of the uh, implications of exalting the name of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla have meanings. So do not strip the meanings of the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla and make them like some, some of the people say Allah Azza wa Jalla is Al-Basir but he really doesn't have sight. Al-Basir meaning the all-seeing, right? Some deviant sects say Allah is Al-Basir but he doesn't have, the, he doesn't have sights otherwise, uh, sight. otherwise he becomes like humans. So trying to avoid the, the, the resemblance between Allah Azza wa Jalla and his, and his creation, his, the human beings, they negated the meaning altogether and stripped it of, its, of, of the name of Allah Azza wa So the name of Allah Azza wa had no essence to it, had no meaning, it was meaningless to some of these deviant sects. Now exalting Allah Azza wa is not something that you just simply say with your word, with your tongue. It's not just verbal things. Reflecting the, the name upon the names of Allah Azza wa and therefore glorifying Allah Azza wa and exalting Him in your heart is the essence of this glorification of Allah Azza wa And this way, when when one uses this meaning reflection upon the greatness of the names of Allah Azza wa and their meanings, when one does that with all of the names of Allah Azza wa his life in totality becomes exalting Allah Azza wa You know when you think Allah is as-sami'ah, the all-hearing. When you reflect upon this, you won't say something that you're ashamed Allah will hear you saying. When, when you see or read or hear the name Al-Muntaqim, the one who takes revenge, you fear the punishment of Allah Azza wa so you don't disobey. When you hear Allah Azza wa Ar-Rahim, the ever-merciful, then you don't despair from the mercy of Allah Azza wa when you sin. You repent because you know that He is Ar-Rahim and He is Ar-Rahman, the All-Merciful. Reflecting upon the names of Allah Azza wa and exalting the names of Allah Azza wa makes a person lead a life that's all glorification of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la alladhi khalaqa fasawwa who created and proportioned. Allah Azza wa Jal created everything and proportioned everything. Allah Azza wa Jal created everything and all things in a state of perfection that is with relation to the objective for which it was created and for the task that he has to perform uh, or they have to, pour, to perform in their existence on earth. And who destined and then guided accordingly. Allah Azza wa Jal predestined everything. He created, he gave an objective, everything is predestined. He paved the way, he facilitated the means, not only to humans, but to all creation. You know, birds have migration uh, trips in the uh, spring and the fall. In some, in some cases, they, they travel for thousands of miles, right? Allah Azza wa Jal placed in them the objective they have to reach, facilitated for them the journey and uh, when the journey is finished and the seasons are finished, they travel back exactly to the point where they started from. Who decreed all of that? Who instilled all of that in them? Who facilitated all of that for them? It is Allah Azza wa Jal who created, predestined, set an objective for his creation and facilitated its achievement, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
والذي أخرج المرعى and who brings out the posture posture includes all types of plantations that uh, are suitable to the creation of Allah Azza wa to benefit from and in, in here the, the meaning is more uh, uh, comprehensive uh, it's the provision for every living thing and it's just it's not just for animals and uh, human beings anything that walks on earth under underground flies swims anything allah azza wa has facilitated for them and brought about for them their needs and their provision and then makes it black stubble now when posture or plantations first grow and come out, they're green, they're fresh, they're flourishing, right? But eventually, they die, they dry out. But subhanAllah, this has usage as well as that. They both have usages for them. Now, there's a deeper meaning in this verse, or in these two verses rather, uh, than just the face value of the verse. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal creates and then causes death. In this verse, the creation and the death is in the green state and the drying state of the plantation. Another meaning for that is you human beings don't think that life is going to be always green. You will have to suffer some dryness because at the end of the day, life is but a test. Allah Azza wa Jal says, bil fitnatan. We test you with goodness and evil. Good things that happen to you and evil things that happen to you are both tests. To see in the case of good things, if you're grateful, and in the case of bad things, if you're patient and persevere. Then comes the glad tidings. The good news that the Prophet ﷺ was promised with by paving the way with the command of exalting the lanes of his Lord. We will make you recite, O Muhammad, and you will not forget. See, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Ibn Abbas said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, used to suffer a lot. He, whenever the revelation came to him, he used to move his tongue and his lips, repeating, 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 repeating. Why? Out of fear, he said. Out of fear that he might forget what was revealed to him, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And this is the glad tidings. This is the good news to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is to the Muslims as well after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was it. whatever was revealed to him, Allah azza wa jalla has taken the responsibility of preserving it in the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he has no worries. He does not have to worry about him maintaining it himself alayhi salatu wa sallam. There is no fear that it will escape or be forgotten by him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is, this verse has a miraculous aspect to it. Quran was revealed upon Muhammad ﷺ by Jibreel. Muhammad ﷺ did not write, did not read, right? He was not, he was an unlearned person. And he was receiving this revelation and none of it was forgotten by him, alayhi salatu wasalam. And it is also a glad tidings by Allah or from Allah to the believers that this faith of yours, this religion of yours is preserved, is protected. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Hijr, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُ It is we who have sent down the dhikr, meaning the Qur'an, 
And we will preserve it. Now one very important point here regarding the preservation of the religion. See, guarding and preserving the religion is not only preserving the Qur'an. Whoever thinks so is mistaken or misguided. Whoever believes that Allah Azza wa Jal did not protect and preserve and guard the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is either mistaken or misguided. Because there are people, there are deviant people who claim that the only thing we need is the Qur'an. We don't need the Sunnah. Why? Because Sunnah has some inauthentic narrations in it. Right? This is their argument. Allah Azza wa Jal, this is very important, so I have to yeah, give it some time. Allah Azza wa Jal says, describing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his speech, he said, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ in huwa illa wahyu yuha. He does not speak out of desire, it's none but revelations. So whatever Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says pertaining to the religion is revealed upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We have revealed down the Quran upon you or for to you so that you clarify to people what was revealed upon them or to them rather right so muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's mission was to convey and clarify and explain see the quran does not have all see we have two main sources of legislation the first is the quran and the second is the sunnah evidence for that the quran commands that we pray gives no details of the prayer. Where is it found in the Quran that we pray five times? Two for Fajr, four for Dhuhr, four for Asr, three Maghrib, and four Isha? None. No verse says that. What verses explain what nullifies the Salah? What nullifies your Wudu? What are the pillars of the Salah? What are the obligatory acts of Salah? Nothing in the Quran. Likewise, Zakah. The details of zakah are not mentioned in the Quran. Some are, right? Hajj, Siyam, four, four practical pillars of Islam are not detailed in the Quran. The only place you find the details for this is the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those who claim that we don't need the Sunnah, in essence are saying we don't need Islam. This is an indirect way of destroying the religion. And we have many deviant people who claim that. They have been through the history up until our time. You still have people who claim so. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَغْفَى Allah Azza wa Jal says, said before that, سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى We will make you recite and you will not forget. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى Except what Allah should will. Indeed, He knows what is declared and what is hidden. This concept of attaching everything to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal is well spread in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal repeats this in different verses to instill in the hearts of the believers that absolutely nothing happens except with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. However, the exception here, except what Allah Azza wa Jal should will, does not mean that some things Allah will will for you to forget. It is actually saying that had Allah Azza wa Jal willed for you to forget, He would have made you forget. 
but he did not as a favor upon you and upon the Muslim uh, nation. إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَلَا يَخْفَى Indeed, he knows what is declared and what is hidden. All matters go back to the wisdom of Allah Azzawajal, who knows what is declared and what is hidden. He is aware of all aspects of all matters. And he decrees things according to his will that's based on wisdom and knowledge of Allah Azzawajal. Let us conclude this session at this point. Uh, and we will resume in the following session. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shalom, Allah, ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka,